Hi, and welcome to video two for section 3.2 uh, for Math 181. This is the second of three videos. So again, let's recall. So again, this is section 3.2, video two. Some more recall items. And as I said in video one, if when I put this on, this doesn't ring true right away, that's okay. You know, that's why we're doing this video. That's why there's this chapter is to kind of refresh your memory on this stuff so that once we start applying it in this, uh, the uh, sections afterwards, now it should be fresh in your mind. So we have, we had one, two, and three in video number one. So recall item number four, this has to do with logs. And we have that if we have log base A of X is equal to Y, so this is the basic log property, right? So when I have this, this really means the same as, so you can go either way, it's what? If I take the base, bring it over, and put it to this exponent, so that means that a to the y power is equal to x. That's what the basic log property is. And you're going to use this in a... Uh, again within the semester. So remember this, when you get to this point and you get stuck, think, oh, can I use the basic log property at all? And you can more often than not, that you can rewrite this equation to look like this guy. Number five, if I have log base A of A to the X, this is just equal to the value of X. So if the base of this log function is the same as the base of this exponent piece, my answer is just whatever the exponent is. And similarly, if I have a to the log base a of x, this is also just equal to x. So depending how it's written, or if we manipulate it, we can get it to look like this. It's simply just x. Number six. And I am going to stress this heavily because when we are doing these problems in the future that deal with logs or natural logs or once we get to the exponential function, it is critical that you're able to recall what the graph of these functions look like. Now it might have been a while since you've done logs, so I will give this to you here. If I have just a basic log function at x equals 1, the log function is 0. And a graph of a log function looks like that. The log is, can never take negative values. It's always got to be positive values. It's 0 when x is 1, and then goes off to positive infinity. So we have that the limit, as x goes to infinity, of log base a of x, so no matter what the base is, log base 10, log base 2, log base 20, doesn't matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry about that. So when we have this function, as we go to positive infinity, this goes to what? This goes to infinity, so this thing is just going to keep going off and up and to the right. And we also have that the limit as x approaches 0 from the right side, so remember that notation, 0 with a little plus sign in the upper corner means 0 from the right side. So as we approach 0 from the right side of log base a of x, this is equal to negative infinity. So our value is going to go to negative infinity. But the, the key thing is not necessarily remembering both of these, just remember what the graph looks like. So when we're trying to figure out domain and range, we're able to figure out based off of, oh yeah, I remember this is what the graph looks like. So it's only our positive numbers goes from negative infinity to positive infinity. That's number six. Number seven. Number seven is our law of logs. 
So the first one we have is that the log of base a of x times y so if I have two functions that are multiplied together inside this parenthesis, or even if it's not inside a parenthesis, but if they're just multiplied together here, this is the same as log base A of x plus log base A of y. If this is a product, I can expand it. I can break it apart into an addition equation. And this goes either way. So if I'm given this piece, I can simplify it by just multiplying the x and the y. B says that log base A of x divided by y is equal to log base A of x minus log base A of y. And then C, log base A of x to the r power is the same as bringing that exponent down in front, r, times log base A of x. And one thing I'll caution you on with A and B, notice this is log of two products, or a, a product of two functions. So it's not log of A times, uh, log of A of x times log base A of y. That you can't split apart. So for example, if I had log base 2 of 3 times log base 2 of 4, this is not the same as just putting a plus sign between these guys. Like, oh, that's right, it's one of my law of logs. That's not true. So you have to be careful with the way that it's written, whether you can actually apply the law of logs. Number 8. Log base e of x, we just, when we're talking about base e, the exponential, that's considered the natural log. So instead of writing log base e of x, we just say natural log of x. Similar properties hold uh, with our regular log bases. So natural log of e to the x, well these two functions, natural log and e, more or less cancel each other out, and this just becomes x. If we have e to the natural log of x, again they sort of cancel each other out, this is just x. And this is important because when we're taking derivatives sometimes in the future here, we might have some function, but if we rewrite it as e to the natural log of that function, then we can take the derivative of e. That, that might be a lot easier sometimes than just taking the derivative of this function. So this is useful because we can rewrite something that's pretty straightforward, x, as e to the natural log of x if we need to be taking derivatives. And the natural log of e is just 1. And then number 10, this isn't covered too much, so if this one is maybe a little bit new to you, or you really have to go back and, and think about it, um, I wouldn't be surprised, but it's our change of base rule. And this says that for any positive number a, except for 1. So a is not 1. But any positive number a, log of a, log base a of x is equal to the natural log of x over the natural log of a. So again, sometimes it's going to be useful for us, given some log function, to use the change of base and rewrite it as natural log of this value divided by natural log of whatever the base was at that point. All right, so that wraps up video two. Not a lot that we really touched on new, the important things. The graph for the log function, this idea of using E and natural log to rewrite a function, and then change a base rule if we need to incorporate that in the future.
So come on back. Uh, video three is just going to be doing exercises from the book, kind of incorporating all this that uh, we relearned or uh, revisited in videos one and two.